All right, so welcome to section 5.3 on the binomial probability distribution. Uh, what you're watching here is a little bit of a clip of a movie called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead. It's one of those movies that I love and everybody else thinks is incredibly boring. And the movie starts with coin flipping. You can see why I'm thrilled by this movie. Uh, one of the characters flips the coin and every time it comes up heads, he keeps it and when it comes up tails, uh, he gives it to his partner. And it turns out he flips heads um, quite a few times in a row. Um, they start to speculate on what this might possibly mean. Uh, but before they're done, he ends up flipping this coin. It appears to be a normal heads tails coin. Uh, ends up flipping heads 92 times in a row. Um, so let's talk about that. Uh, it turns out that the probability of flipping a fair coin, uh, the probability of flipping 92 heads in a row, uh, that probability is 1 out of about... Five octillion. Uh, that's a five with 27 zeros after it. There's six. I'm not even going to write them all out. Uh, but it's a really, really small probability. Um, it turns out you are more likely to get hit by lightning four times in a single year than you are for this to happen. Uh, it's less likely, though, than shuffling a deck and having it come out completely sorted in order. Um, but let's talk about how we can figure out some of those probabilities that I just told you. I just crunched all those numbers. Uh, and you, too, will be able to crunch those numbers by the time we are done with the, probability, with the binomial probability distribution. Uh, but let's talk about, first of all, uh, what it takes to actually be binomial. Because not everything in the world can be analyzed using this technique. Uh, so there's four requirements. Um, so a binomial experiment is an experiment which satisfies these four conditions. Um, so uh, there has to be a fixed number of trials. In other words, you have to say, I'm gonna flip this coin 92 times, or I'm gonna flip it 10 times, but you have to say, I'm gonna do it this many times. Uh, you also need each trial to be independent of the others. In other words, what happens one time shouldn't have any direct effect on what happens the next time. And theoretically, that's true when you flip a coin. Right? The coin has no memory. Uh, if you flip it and you get heads one time, you've still got a 50-50 chance the next time of getting heads or tails. Um, the third requirement is that there are only two outcomes. That's where the bi in binomial comes from. It's just saying only two things can happen. And a lot of times we sort of call those two things success or failure. So you can say get a heads on a coin, that's one out of two things. But you could also say draw an ace of spades out of a deck of cards. Right? There's 52 different cards, but when you define your experiment that way, you either draw the ace of spades or you don't. So there's really only two outcomes there. Um, and then the probability of each outcome remains constant from trial to trial. Um, so you don't want to flip your coin that's 50-50 and then shave a little bit of metal off your coin, drill it out a little bit, and the next time you flip it, it's like 53.47 or something. Um, so as long as those four conditions are met, uh, you do have a binomial probability distribution. And let's just, uh, let's not do 92, but let's, let's maybe say, um, let, let's flip a coin 10 times. Uh, so let's flip a coin... Ten times, and let's talk about the probability of just getting ten heads in a row. And maybe we'll also do what's the probability that you get four heads out of those ten trials. Um, so we can handle both of those questions and lots more. Uh, and 
you'll find as you uh, read through the book, they're going to start to say, here's how you do this using the formula. And here's how you do this using a table of probabilities. And here's how you do this using technology. And I just want to say for the rest of the quarter, for this entire class, uh, we are always going to go with technology. So when they explain how to do it with the formula, skip that. And when they explain how to do it with the tables, uh, you can skip that as well. Um, and I do want to point out in the book, at the end of each section here, uh, let's see, I'm looking at page 217 on the hardcover version of the book. So I don't know if you can see this, but on page 217, they've got this kind of blue box here, and it tells you how to use various types of technology. Uh, we particularly are using StatDisk, which is often the first one that's listed, but they tell you how to do it with Excel and with your TI calculator and a bunch of others. And I do really want to make the point that after this course, you probably won't use StatDisk again if this ever comes up for you in your job or life somewhere. But if it is coming up for you in your job, there'll be some sort of technology that's similar to this. Um, so let's move on to the next video where we will look at how to actually compute these things using StatDisk.